tonight at 10.50 on Central. Five games and your fam. If you're after a great caravan holiday, get a bogey, get a bogey. and see why holidays are made in Haven. Sorry to bother you, but I'm having a dinner party and I've run out of coffee. <laughs> Come in. Thank you. Will Gold Blend be too good for your guests? Oh, I think they could get used to it. It's a very sophisticated coffee. They have very sophisticated taste. Do they? Yes. Well, I must be getting back. Now, golden roasted, richer, smoother, Nescafe Gold Blend. Your new neighbor yet? Oh, I've uh, popped in for coffee. You are Pisces. No, Sagittarius. Discover what the stars have in store for you in the Sunday Express 1988 Horoscope Supplement. Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show all you lovers of the cathode ray how to make your very own copy of the IBA yearbook. First take a blank book like this. Then stuff it full of photographs and features about all your favourite independent television stars and programmes. A little uh, behind the scenes information a dash of independent local radio, and voila! But in the best traditions of television, here's one I made earlier. Television and Radio 1988, out now. Christmas Sunday fun at 10 on Central. Sitting in it. Try to see the same old faces on television every Christmas. Well, this year there's something new. The same old faces, but this time they're made out of rubber. Yes, the spinning image Christmas special, 10 o'clock, December the 27th. This is Christmas Sunday. Christmas Sunday at 10.30 on Central, and it's back to the 14th century where they made their own entertainment. It could be, and it is, a witch hunt. I have come to be hanged, you hear? Have you filled in the necessary form? Ah, that's right, it's right, but there's a witch. A spellbinding production. The ladies not for burning. Christmas Sunday night at 10.30. Now we're lucky enough to be granted a special Boxing Night audience with Dame Edna. Whenever 
where the eyes of the world are focused. Whenever history is in the making, she is there. Organizing events, guiding those new to the limelight. Bringing openness and goodwill to all men. In the corridors of power, she sets the pace with a touch of seasonal color. Jetting around the world to bring a message of comfort to the bewildered. Ever ready to share herself with her audience, she puts the glad back into glad tidings and proves that niceness is next to holiness. Interrupting her Christmas schedule to be with us tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Dame Edna Everidge. people want to be me? How many stars would like to be Dame Edna? We live in a world of wannabes. It's a wannabe world. <laughs> you know, so many people, I think, become desperately unhappy just because they're not content with a lot, not content with a little persona they find themselves in. Everyone in Australia wants to be up north for Christmas, wants to be in the northern hemisphere where, with any luck, there might be snow and holly. And a lovely plump Bernard Matthews sizzling in there. <laughs> whereas, whereas, of course, so many of my little Tommy friends would love to be in my homeland of Australia, spending Christmas the Australian way. <laughs> I feel a profane carol coming on. I do. <laughs> Bridesmaid Madge Allsop. <laughs> Couldn't you have done something a bit more festive, darling? Look at that frock. <laughs> well, I suppose it's a little bit seasonal, isn't it? It is really. I'm what you call it. Mince pie brown, Madge. <laughs> you log fawn. <laughs> you know, this woman, my bridesmaid Madge Allsop from New Zealand, has led to a lot of poison pen letters that I've been receiving lately. Yucky, awful, nasty people have been writing to me 
accusing me of persecuting Madge Allsop, and I haven't been. I care for this woman. You name another megastar who has someone on her show who does nothing but depress people. <laughs> Madge Allsop is the most spoiled woman in the world. She would be destitute without me, possibly absolutely destitute. She is the most pampered widow on the planet. She puts Jackie and Nessus in the shade, Madge Allsop. <laughs> Anyway, there she is, little mad daughter. But I do adore her, I really do. And I'm going to prove that. I adore her, even though she nearly wrecked my series. And I'm going to put on the record as giving Madge a Christmas present for everyone to see. There you are, darling. Every day is Christmas for you, but it's a new frock. Well, don't be grateful to me. <laughs> you hypocrite. <laughs> I mean that in a caring way. I don't. Later. Later. Open it later, darling. Later. Not in front of people. I'm going to see you undressing on this show. <laughs> I have work ahead. I have unpleasant work ahead, I'm sorry to say. Because the first guest on this wonderful, wonderful special is a person that I've been avoiding for, well, oh, seems all my life. <laughs> when Sir Les Patterson comes into a room, I walk out. I... <laughs> We've never been photographed together, isn't it? <laughs> Forgiveness is the name of the game at this time of the year and no, it pains me, quite frankly, to introduce the cultural attaches, the Court of St. James, Chairman of the Australian Cheese Board, <laughs> the newly appointed Minister for Tourism. I'm nonetheless going to ask you, if you will, to welcome, if you must, Sir Les Patterson. <laughs> Keep her around in case I feel in the mood for a little bit of hardcore stenography. You with me? <laughs> How's about this box she's wearing, eh, Edna? Isn't it fantastic? It's made of rubber. She's all rubbered up for this show. Rubber! <laughs> My rubber bubber! <laughs> if I make a mistake on a top secret document, she just sits on it and, and rubs her bum up and down. <laughs> It's a big saving on my precious correction fluid. And I reckon she adds a bit of glamour to this show. Your opinion is of no value, thank you, Leslie. We don't need her type of glamour on this show, anyway. You need all the glamour you can get. Look at all that also. She got a head in her like a half-sucked mango. <laughs> Let's face it, you're no page three girl. <laughs> well, that is charming, isn't it, viewers? So that's the voice of Australian diplomacy, is it? <laughs> you flaunted your floozy for all the world to see. <laughs> it's time for our first proper guest. All the world? Is this show going to Australia? It most certainly is. It's being beamed everywhere. Christ, Jackie. Piss off, will you? <laughs> Hello, Gwen. It's uh, bloody lonely here in London all by myself. <laughs> Get home, Gwen, darling. I'll put him on a plane. Come on, Edna, it's Christmas. Let's pull a cracker. I wouldn't touch something you're on the other end of. Fair enough. Jack, you'll begin it, won't you, Jack? <laughs> Not a first for you. Oh. Let's pull the cracker. Look at this, eh? Of course, I cleaned this one up a bit. <laughs> This is the one about the uh, the girl. She's on the desert island. Have you heard this? Uh, she's a nudist. 
she's only taking on. And uh, there's nothing else on the island except uh, a donkey, a gorilla, and a little wicker. <laughs> well, one night, you know, there's a beautiful moon shining, and she creeps into her open-ended sleeping bag, and it's very, very dark, and she's feeling a bit, uh, you know, a bit restless. <laughs> and she suddenly, she, she's aware that something's creeping in the other end of her sleeping bag. <laughs> and in the morning, she wakes up, and she says, thanks a lot, Alan. She says, but why does your breath smell like carrot? <laughs> <laughs> well, the next night... <laughs> you far enough, you foul-mouthed, womanizing lust. <laughs> you know, I mean, you guys... <laughs> if you like, but I have to get rid of that custody man and you, poor little waif. What burns that monster must have slobbered all over you? <laughs> Look over and see Sister Ben's good, would you, sweetheart? she give you a blood test and a smell. <laughs> birds in the whole wide world. A big Christmas ovation for Lulu! Survivor, aren't you? So am I. We, we wouldn't be on the show if we were. I would. I say I consider it an honour to be on your show. Thank I've you. been watching religiously and I think it's excellent. It is, isn't it? <laughs> I've been listening to that little voice of yours. I, I travel about a bit. I hear many accents, many little voices. Yeah. I'm a little bit like Professor Rex. Higgins, was it? In my <laughs> lady, do you yeah. remember? He could tell where people came from. Yes. Even what part of the street they came from, by I the way they yeah. spoke. And I'm listening to you. Mm. Is there a hint of Australian that I can hear? Because, <laughs> no, not just because you adore me, and I'm a bit of a role model for so many little <laughs> But there's a link, isn't there? A spooky old link with Australia. At uh, one stage, you know uh, what they you mean when I was married to Boris Gibbs? Yes. Yeah. Because they... And they're not actually Australian, but they lived there for many, oh, many years. Oh, they did. The little and Gibbs. They, the Bee Gees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they adored you, and they used to talk about you all the time to me. Was that the reason why the marriage broke up? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> 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 
but what went wrong in that marriage? Was that little boy? Oh, I don't know. It's very difficult to say. We were both very young. Yeah. I mean, I put it down to that because I really don't know what the answer is. Blame it on you. Maybe. Yes, I think you can, Lula. I think sometimes you can. <laughs> because you're poor Sally, you know. I am. I'm a oh, bit of a mother figure. <laughs> Before I married my husband, Norm, mm -hmm. there was someone else. <gasps> Yeah. Well, I've never revealed this, but I feel I can. <laughs> I can. There was someone else, a boy, oh, mm -hmm. a night. Part of a boy, and, oh, which was quite serious. We were talking, you know, talking quite seriously. <laughs> but it didn't come to anything. It did break up, I think. I think it was youth, mm -hmm. inexperience, and yeah. he made me sick. <laughs> I couldn't stand him, but darling, <laughs> you're happily married now, my yes, darling, yes, aren't you? I am. Yes. see that. We can feel it, too. <laughs> happiness is something, you know, that is very detectable. Mm -hmm. You can hide sadness, but you can't hide happiness. Lots of props, don't you? Look, do you yes. ever have any hassles with a hassle? <laughs> like, like a duffel coat with wandering toggles. <laughs> Your present husband. Oh, he's his name is John Frieda. <laughs> his name is John Frieda, and he's a hairdresser. Frieda, isn't that spooky? Is it? Because my son Kenny has a friend called Frieda. <laughs> <laughs> and he is a hairdresser. His real name is Fred, but they call him Frieda in the <laughs> They do. Oh, darling, I'd love your little <laughs> hubby to pamper my follicles. I <laughs> Can organize it. Do you ever get jealous of the other women whose hair he runs his eager <laughs> fingers through, do you? No. no I, 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 I think I might if it was with someone like you, you know, someone oh, elegant and darling. No. Well, you don't mean that, you just saying you're a stupid woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean that in a caring and a maternal way. Just, I really mean do. I mean when you first, you first did your hair, did you know then or did it slowly, slowly happen? Slowly. Happened slowly. Yes, yes I liked him. And then it developed into a relationship. It's rather lovely. I think really. that's so nice. nice. You didn't hurry. It was nice and slow, <laughs> and you kept making appointments. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, was it you found you weren't cancelling? Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't I getting on well with this, Mike? <laughs> you know, your hair is very, very pretty. It is your own, isn't it? <laughs> It's, it's gorgeous. gorgeous. It's it is. Yes. Done by John Frieda. <coughs> and uh, do you find you get a bit obsessed with hair? Are right? you oh, a bit in I'm into always, hair? Always been obsessed with hair. A little bit of a fetish, perhaps. Uh, it definitely is. It definitely is. When you I was a little girl. Pearl. She's a lovely girl. <laughs> <laughs> you, Lulu, Lindley Patterson. I thought I'd aborted you. <laughs> Point taken, David. A point taken. <laughs> if you knew Lulu like I know Lulu. Lulu. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lulu. I'm sorry, but that man has been going downhill for years. I don't know. <laughs> Beating up. <laughs> well, don't apologise to me. No, with this wonderful Vile. technology. He's Vile. ghastly. Uh, you know, he's on a shoot everybody. now. He's on a shoot. He's going to the London Weekend Psychiatric Department. <laughs> <laughs> he is. Going to be cold turkey for Les Patterson this Christmas. <laughs> we'll take a break while they dry him out. <laughs> From the moment you're born, electricity is working for you in its own unique way, shaping your life and the world around you.